Hey guys, this video is on the algorithm for Floyd Warshall, which finds all of the shortest path pairs that you can in a graph. So Aman will be explaining this to us and let's see what happens. So today we'll be talking about Floyd Warshall algorithm. It is used to find all pairs shortest path and similar to Dijkstra, a little bit different as it considers all the uh, vertex pair. While for Dijkstra, we have a fixed source and it finds the shortest path from that particular source. Now the major difference between this algorithm and the extra is that the extra doesn't allow you to have negative edges in your graph. While in Floyd Washel, it does. It solves the problem even when negative edges are there, but not negative cycles. So let's see how can we find all shortest path possible between any two vertices by using the extra. So uh, if we want to solve this particular problem using the extra, what you can do is uh, keep on changing the source so if we have V vertices and E edges, a extra from a particular source will take V log V plus E time to run. So we can do similar thing for all the vertices. Hence the complexity will be V into V log V plus E. Now, uh, if we take the worst case scenario, we'll have v square plus v log v plus v into v square, which is v cube. So, the extra for all uh, for a graph which has all positive edges will solve this problem in v cube. We'll try to solve the similar problem with the similar complexity, but including negative edges and not negative cycles. What do I mean by negative cycles? So consider a graph like this. When I start from fern and try to come back to one, the net distance covered is minus one plus two, which is minus one and minus three, which is minus four. And hence you will never come to a minimum value because every time you take a circle around this graph, you will keep on reducing the value. So the problem will be insolvable. Hence, we'll focus on the graphs which have just negative edges and not negative cycles. Yeah, so another way in which you can solve this problem even when the edges are negative by using the extra is first running Bellman for the algorithm which will basically convert all these negative edges to positive edges. So now, if we look into the complexity of it, we'll have V into E for the Bellman forward and then running the extra for each of the vertices. For worst case complexity, if we see VQ. Now, why should we look into Floyd Washell? Is that it's a very good example of how you should apply DP on uh, graphs. Second, it's really easy to implement this algorithm as compared to the Johnson algorithm, which is just a combination of Bellman Ford and followed by Dijkstra for each, each vertex. I'll give you an example of how Bellman Fold algorithm works. So uh, we'll take an external node. Let's say it's four and connect it with any of the nodes. Now we'll try to find the shortest path from this node to every other node using Bellman Fold algorithm. So for so path length for node zero will be zero as this edge weight is zero. Path length for two as there's only one way in which you can reach two will be minus two. Path length for three will be two minus two which is zero. And path length for one will be minus one. In this way, now you will reassign edge weights and how you will do is this so suppose h0 is 0 h3 is 0 h2 is minus 2 and h1 is minus 1 so w of 0 comma 2 will be equal to w of 0 comma 2 plus h of 0 minus h of 2. w0 comma 2 is the previous edge weight which is minus 2. h0 as we calculated is 0 minus 
h of 2 which is minus 2 which sums up to 0 and similarly for all the edges we'll calculate the same and create a new graph with these new edge weights and apply Dijkstra to it. This will give us the shortest path from each node to every other node. So the complexity of this algorithm will be for running Bellman Ford initially we use V plus E and for running Dijkstra for each vertex we'll have V into V log V plus E which is in the worst case where E equals to V square we have V cube plus V square log V plus V cube which is O of V cube. Now as I explained earlier we won't be using this algorithm because it's pretty difficult to do uh, to implement it as compared to Floyd Washel and we'll now jump onto the Floyd Washel algorithm and try to explain how it works. So till now we have seen how to solve this problem using Johnson algorithm. Now we'll try to focus on Floyd Washel which is basically not a proper very systematic way of doing things but a much more intuitive and intuitive and a beautiful way of solving this problem. The beauty of graphs is if you have a little insight into how to solve a sum problem, you can map into different problems and try to solve them as well. So if you have your base strong in graphs, you can solve any kind of problem and this particular algorithm uses this. So if you have a small knowledge of DP and try to think about the problem from scratch as if you don't have any knowledge of any other graph algorithm, you will be definitely able to solve this. So the problem at hand is you have to find all possible shortest path, all pair of possible shortest path. Now what one would think if he has no prior knowledge is, okay, uh, I'll start from i to j and take all the possible paths from i to j and try to take the shortest one. Now I'll do for all the vertices. So now I'll traverse all the possible paths from i to j and take the minimum and hence I'll get all pair shortest path. We'll take a very simple example and try with the with the, from the smallest possible example. So suppose you have just two cities which you want to connect I and J. The only way which you can do is take this edge and this is the weight. This is the shortest path from I to J. We have N minus one cities. So what it will look like is I to J are connected in different ways and each will have may or may not have intermediate nodes. So we have value of distance of i to j when we have n minus 1 cities and this is p of i to j when we have zero intermediate cities which is basically the weight between these two. Now from simple mathematical induction what we can think of is if we try to add additional node into this graph how will it impact the weights from i to j? We know that we have considered all the paths from i to j when there were n minus 1 nodes. Now we need to figure out how will it change when we add an additional node. What here can happen is, if there is a new path which consists of node n joining i to j, the distance from i to j would change a bit. How the value changes depends on how we go from i to k and from k to j. So, the only way it can happen is when we include the node k and thus we'll just focus on all the paths which pass through k as those only will impact the value from i to j. If there is no path which passes from i which passes through k connecting i to j, the value of distance from i to j won't change. Structure would look something like this, k, some values from 0 to k minus 1 some values from 0 to k minus 1 and k in between. Now we'll try to write this into a form of an equation which we can recurse on or iterate on in order to find a dp solution. So let's say distance of p of ij with k total nodes will be equal to when the path from i to j doesn't consist of k or even if it is considered it is considered it is little lengthier than what it was previously so in that case we'll take minimum of i to j including k minus 1 or in this case what we have we are going from p uh, from i to k considering intermediate 
k minus 1 nodes plus we are going j to k k to j considering k minus 1 nodes this ensures that we are taking all the possible paths and we are going node by node and we are considering all the no all the edges which pass through a particular node and hence this ensures the first condition that we have to check for all possible paths so uh, what from what we have learned before let's try to solve this graph and try to find all pair possible shortest paths so in initial condition as we saw when there are only two cities let's consider the, consider the same case so what do we have for a base case is 0 is connected by 1 with weight 4 0 connects to 2 with weight minus 2 we have an edge from 1 to 2 3 to 1 so this is the base case which we have right now so now we'll try to add node 0 as the intermediate node and from here we can see that one such path is from 1 to 2 having 0 as the intermediate node and no other uh, vertex passes through it no other edge passes through node 0 so we have 1 0 2 4 and minus 2 here we can see that the length of path from 1 to 2 is less than the direct connected path from 1 to 2 which had 0 intermediate nodes so we can replace this by this simple thing the rest so these three will be merged as they show their respective minimum distances and after first step we have something like this now we'll add node 1 and what we finally get is 3 connecting to 1 and going till 0 this is one of the paths which passes through 1 and another path which traverses till 2 as we saw before is 1 is connected to 0 and connected to 2 this is the fastest way in which you can reach from 1 to 2 and similarly we'll extend this to incorporate node 2 so this is what we have after two iterations that is addition of node 0 and node 1 now we'll similarly focus on node 2 and what all paths pass through 2 and are also shortest so both these conditions should be satisfied when we are adding node 2 to it so similarly this is another path which passes to 2 and impacts the existing solution so what do we have here now we'll move on to the last step which is addition of node 3 this is one of the paths which we have from 2 to 3 to 1 and similarly taking the previous paths we have as 0 is connected to 1 in this particular way and this is the smallest uh, path from which you can reach from 1 to 0. Uh, 0 is connected to 2 which keeps a negative weight so we can improve the answer from this we uh, finally we conclude this and this shows the shortest path from each vertex to the other we have this as a final solution after adding one node one after the other so if i want to say uh, find out the shortest path from 1 to 0 i directly pick this and if i want to find the shortest path from 2 to 1 i'll pick this one and similarly these three will give me all possible combinations of each vertex and hence the shortest path so uh, uh, if you search on the web, you will find many matrix techniques which look simpler, but they are very less intuitive. While this one shows that, okay, these are the paths which pass through 0, these are the paths which pass through 1, these are the paths which pass through 2, and similarly for 3. And how did we come to this? It is by addition of a single node and making it as the center node or a node from which edges through which edges pass. Thanks, Aman, for this very intuitive explanation. Uh, there's a lot of explanations on the matrix uh, for floyd washall but I actually hadn't understood the algorithm till I could understand the dynamic programming part of it. If you haven't really understood what's going on here, take your time uh, and if you still find that there are some problems in the video, please comment them below. We love your suggestions uh, and if you want notifications for further videos, you can always subscribe. So I'll see you next time. Thanks to Suhail Vemu, Shubham Jain, Dhruv Shivastav, and Ankush Saxena, they are our first four channel members. It's great to have you on board. You can be a channel member too by following the link in the description below. Now we need to convert all those negative edges to positive edges in order to apply the extra. So, uh, I'll go ahead and name.
Sorry, we're never going to do it. Flash rate.